Well, it's a better performing uh, economy now, considering the fact that uh, at the time when uh, Ramji came in, it was a very, very uh, bad situation. The economy was running at a minus growth. Uh, the state finding it so difficult to be able to run its services, given the fact that uh, um, uh, militants are basically running the show at that time. Five years after the tension, or after the arrival of uh, Ramji, which is about 2007, we started to see a good growing economy with most uh, sectors uh, performing very well. Mining sector is, is moving a very high in the country at the moment within the Ministry of Mines, especially looking at certain different uh, minerals. I mean, like we're looking at uh, nickel mining in Isabel, uh, also some parts of uh, Troiso, some parts of the Western province. We see that uh, it's very important that uh, we make things a bit easy for investors. The Solomon Islands had a lot to recover from. I mean, the estimate about the impact of the tensions on GDP growth is that it set them back 30 years. Um, and also, we know from the experience in other post-conflict countries that they can return within um, four to five years, four to five, six years, to a period of violence. We haven't seen that in the Solomon Islands. We haven't seen a major threat to stability. Um, and. I think we also know from, from other international experience that it takes about three or four decades to recover from a period of, you know, intense and intense and extreme conflict. So there, there, there is a long way to go. And I'm happy that it's, it's not gone far like Bougainville or East Timor, where gradually you drag the young people into the scene to take off, because that will certainly destroy the future. Between 20 to 30 now, year olds are thinking more about things that ne they never used to think about. And that is, they're looking at opportunities to make money for themselves, they're keeping themselves busy. This is what I never noticed before, that they actually now have an, an aim and a direction they want to go, yeah? And this one, between 15 and 20, never used to be. They were still busy worrying about whether they'd get an good education. But you have a lot of Solomon Islanders now at that age group wanting to run business, which is, I think, good. I think it's, it keeps them busy because we have a lot of dropouts. And if they, we don't have that drive in our young people, then what else are they going to start thinking about if they're not thinking about business? I know some young people who, who started with selling coconuts and now own cabs, have a little store, you know? I mean, these are the kind of people that we need here. We're not going to sit down and whinge yeah, they're going to get out there and do something. I think that's, that's a good sign, a small dream that a, maybe a young Solomon Islander might have wanting to achieve something when he can't get a loan in the bank because, you know, it's tough. If he goes for agriculture grant or if he goes for fisheries grant and he can't meet the requirements, then you get angry, disillusioned young people. Then you get trouble because then they go the other way, which is where we went down already and we don't want to go down that road again, yeah? We've come a long way in a very short period of time, which is also worrying too. You know, we're only human. Did we really forgive? Did we really put it away? That's the question we need to ask ourselves now. And that's why the discussion of it, and then of what happened and how we're gonna deal with it in the future needs to carry on. Reconciliation is a, a process that they, they do in order to, to get um, people that uh, were involved in the, in the conflict, you know, to come together and reconcile again. And it is a part and parcel of their life, and, uh, and that is why, you know, it is a, a major challenge for them, you know, for them to progress from where they are at the moment, you know, that it's important that reconciliation should be done. From the Melanesian and the Solomon Islander way, is look for forgiveness and, and move on because otherwise their country could be destroyed again in a different way in a different time. And, and no one wants that. People don't hang on to the past too much. They seem to be able to get on to the present very, very, uh, um, 
easily. We have decided to leave the, I mean, the past behind. So most of what people were going to come, born in my house, they live in my house, come, you give me what I can, for life, they are relatives. Yeah, so one of them happened, become, becomes history. To us, you know, it is a issue that needs to be done by the, initiated by the, by the people of Solomon Islands, but we are providing the environment for, for it, you know. If you look at the history of the troubled times, the police, uh, some of the police at the time were involved in, uh, in, in very poor behaviour, and, and, and in, in fact some crimes were committed by police. And for the, for the reconciliation to work correctly, regardless of whether the, the current police were involved, that uniform needs to stand up and say, I'm sorry for what took, part in, took place in the past. And if they did that, the community might learn to trust them. For well, some of us, we fall into the such trap, okay? Like I'm a former police officer, a, a senior police officer, and uh, I was trying to carry out my orders. But it happens during the time which two groups are clashing together, and then uh, we fall into between those two groups. It's part of our culture, which I have to reconcile with the people which uh, feel hate to me. Suppose anything has happened, yeah, we follow by all and reconcile. And then we pray and forgive each other. Forgiveness is, is good. But the forgiveness can come from the real heart. Then the Bible guarantees us. Suppose you may forgive Lomak, blame me, I'd blame me no more. I am still not, not really forgiveness and not really peace. Eh? <laughs> forgive long face no more, eh? but at the back of the heart, you mean no sabe. Eh? The federal government says the time is right to start thinking about bringing troops home from the Solomon Islands. After nearly a decade helping to restore law and order, the Defence Minister says their job is done. Locals are being assured they won't be left on their own. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today. These are historic occasions. Solomon Islands will require assistance for many years to come, but that's not an unusual statement. Troops coming in and troops going out. It's important that we mark these occasions. This one is a particularly significant day. It's the last rotation for trips from New Zealand. It's the last incoming rotation from Papua New Guinea. Solomon Islands is a country with an income per capita of around $1,000. So it's in global terms. There are many countries in that situation, but they're all very poor countries. And all of them, all of those countries require assistance from outside. It marks what is one of the distinguishing and most important characteristics of Ramsey, and that is that it's a regional mission. It includes contributions from all the Pacific Island countries. That has been one of the keys for Ramsey's success. I think that all the members of the Pacific Islands are very proud you know, to be part of Ramsey, to come here, to be called to come and assist a friend who, who needs assistance. This will uh, Ramsey intervention in the region. Hemi Barava set him one for the good for the example and on how to make him peace. If not in the region, uh, other parts of the world. Solomon Islanders should be very confident that Australia is not walking away from Solomon's. Uh, Ramsey's going through a transition now. Um, a lot of the programs that used to be handled um, under Ramsey will transition to AusAid programs in the future and that underlines our, our commitment. The challenge is for us to take on the responsibility of developing the country ourselves. This country is now in the hands of the young people. Yeah. And if they learn what happened in the immediate past and see that it's bad for the country and they will learn from that to plan the future, then Solomon Islands have a, a hope, yeah, which I believe it will.
There's so much out there in the world today that Somalians can benefit from. If we did, we played, we played the right game, huh? but we're not playing it, and I think that's where we're losing out. In the mid-90s onwards, the next group of people that came in seemed to take, uh, have a very different take on, on, on how to govern the country. From that point onwards, it was all personal gain as opposed to uh, uh, actually trying to make the country become more developed. But it's politicians with foresight, yeah, that we need in this country. Because if we don't, we're going to go have another crisis. Ramsey one day will leave, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think it is important that uh, these young leaders, you know, they should uh, stand up and be prepared, you know, to come up and uh, lead their country. As far as the future is concerned, potential, there is a lot of potential. The reality is, if this does not change, it's a very bleak future. Young people should not, should not keep quiet. It is their future that these leaders are playing with. They must speak up. We must contribute to the best of our ability this time. Now I have no time for me to sit down and talk, talk and complain. Because have no good for me say, oh, Solomon, have no good place for me to stop playing. Cost of living am high to mass. You stay here, people row all the way, kind of saying, have no good for me to talk, because I'm going to go away. So <laughs> me must. Take my responsibility. Yeah, if me sit down, especially me young person, me sit down, then me complain, him no good stuff, him look rubbish. If you look at the basic history of any developing country that has then to come out okay, there's got to be at some point some critical mass, you know, like a bunch of people who come out and in various areas and try to drive things even sometimes from, from the background. If we want to have stability, if we want to have a strong society, if we want to have a nation that, uh, you know, is, is actually moving forward, we cannot um, rely on others to come and do that for us. And that's one thing that we must, we must always have in mind, bear in mind in whatever we do, in whatever you know, work we do, whether it be a politician or an administrator or a father in the household, a leader in the community. What's involved here is a, is a deep cultural change. And, and the people who really matter are the people in government, in politics, in public life, in Honiara and in the Solomon Islands. If they want uh, the clean, open, democratic state that they said back in 2003 they wanted, well, they have responsibilities. There's only so much that Ramsey can do. Started playing slow. Had another heavy night again last night, you know. I was up till 7:30 at the Tropicana bar, playing "Baby I Go to Rio" on my lucky blue guitar. These small Pacific towns start to look the same. Missionaries, mercenaries, playing their little games. Better bashing with the Bible. Than the thought of an SLR So they say But either way I'd rather play my blue guitar SIPL plantations Yesterday went up in flames See the mining boys are asking If the candle's worth the game Well the captain